my computer does something really weird every time Charlotte and I start doing these recordings on Fridays now. It's really strange. And then my computer is just completely useless for the rest of the day. It's a real struggle. And really weird then. So Charlotte and I were okay. And then you jumped in, Brie, and my entire computer crashed, which never, ever happened. Everything <laughs> was completely crashed. And that doesn't happen. I have got a really good computer. Uh, Sorry. That's weird. That is weird. It doesn't happen. We had two different film crews come here in the last year. Both of them had problems in my house, but they haven't had problems anywhere else, like problems with the footage being scrambled. And they're like, I've never seen this before. This hasn't happened with anyone else that we've interviewed. I was like, well, it's not you, it's me. There's something wrong with my house. I, I can't figure out what it is. And now, my computer now is making weird noises. So something else might happen again. I'm not sure. I did manage to press record though, right? Yeah, it is recording. Yes. Very strange. We're recording. Yeah. Anyway, how are you doing, Brie? Excellent, eh? Are you really? You? No, I'm not. <laughs> I just I just was telling Charlotte. So we got a viral illness in the house. My kids have a little cough now. Every time I get a viral illness now, my neuropathy gets worse. Oh. And so spent, you know, the last 10 days dealing with that. And, and then I started steroids and it at least stopped the progression. So now it's sitting at a steady decline from what I was before. Do you get those um, shooting nerve pains down your arms and legs? Yeah, and the steroids actually stopped it. So now at least it's just numb and tingling instead of the shooting, you know, and it was actually as soon as I started the steroids that first day, my legs hurt really bad everywhere where that shooting pain was. And so then it, my legs just hurt, like it felt like they were in a vice, like vice grips. And then the next day the pain was gone. So I'm assuming it was a big inflammatory response and then the nerves are going chaotic or the myelin or whatever is being attacked. And then the steroids finally calmed it down. And then my body was like, that hurt really bad. And so it freaked out for a day and now it's, it's chilled out. It's the worst but, bit about getting a virus, isn't it? Any virus now, even like a little mild cold, because you know that it's just going to flare up everything that you've got. Yeah, and it's not like, you know, where you feel like crap and then you go back to baseline. It, <laughs> you like, your quality of life is downgraded with every virus. So, and some people don't have that, but it's definitely a trend for me now. I didn't notice it before I got COVID. So I think COVID is what set it off for me. So on top of my vaccine injury, COVID is what set it off. So. Have you still got antibodies? I don't know, because I'm getting IVIG. So IVIG just kind of washes everything out anyway. Mm. So like my blood tests are pointless now. And so I have no idea if I have antibodies. I would assume so. I had my COVID case um, in April. And depending on what this was, but we all tested negative, but the reaction sure felt like it was COVID. So maybe we got a little variant again. I don't know. Well, we don't want to put you in a position where we make you talk about everything, all, everything that you're going through again, because we know that you do that all the time. And, and we tend not to um, kind of, we don't want to dwell on a lot of that when we do these as yeah. well, we want to talk about other stuff. And, um, and we, we had a topic, actually, that we thought might be an interesting one to talk to, um, talk about with you. And, um, and that topic is the theme of connections. Oh, collections, okay. Connections. Connections. Oh, connections. Yeah, with an N. Like what are we collecting? No, connect, so I, I don't, do, do, do you think we might need a translator? Because the language. <laughs> <laughs> do we need some translation? So, so I just need to turn up my hearing aid. Connections. Um, and I wanted to start 
that little chat off by I I wanted to explain about how you and I met first of all actually because I think this is this is quite interesting um I don't know if you remember it it was I think it was well over a year ago now actually it was quite early days for me and um and I I was very um bothered by the amount of inaccurate information that was that was I was seeing online everywhere and I kind of got that I think that was when this started I'm a bit of a stickler for kind of details and truth and honesty and accuracy anyway always have been um, and with the anything to do with the vaccine it really bothered me when people were saying things that they were that weren't true or that they couldn't prove or that um they, they, I was very aware that there were a lot of people who were just saying things to scare us, to scare anybody. And I didn't want yeah. to be, ever want to be that person. And I wanted to be brave enough to call people up on it, but kindly, if I thought that they might have been doing that. And there was some conversation on a thread somewhere in one of the support groups and somebody said something, and I used to always say to people, don't make your decisions based on what's happened to me go read the trial data. I always used to say to people, go and read the trial data. And somebody responded by saying, um, but there are people in the trials who were dropped after they had a, an adverse reaction. And, and I said, well, I, I don't, that can't possibly be true. And, um, and they said, uh, yes, there's a woman in America who was part of the AstraZeneca trials and um, she was dropped when she had an adverse reaction. And I said, what well, kind, again, kindly, I said, what's her name? Who is she? Tell me who she is. So they, they gave, me, gave me your name. I said, right, do you know her personally? Well, no, but I, I'm connected to her. Okay, can you introduce me to her? And, um, and, you, and she introduced me to you. And, and I said, I'd want to have a conversation with you face to face. And you very I kindly, do you remember, very kindly oh. agreed to talk to me. And um, and then I was then, I've since then, I've always been able to say, no, there are people who have been dropped from the trials after they had adverse reactions. And um, first, so firstly, I wanted to share that because how important it's become to many of us for, to verify information and how difficult it can be to verify information, but it's really important to do that. And secondly, I wanted to talk about how um, to share that because of how open you've been to connecting with me and with Charlotte and plenty of other people um, and how much those connections that all of us have made have become something quite beautiful that's come from a really awful situation so I just wanted to share it to share that story so that people knew that was how we connected I don't know how you connected Charlotte with with um, Brie um well it was pretty similar but I didn't actually go hunting Brie down like you did <laughs> Well, I did. I kind of Facebook stalked her for a little while. Um, but I actually watched the um, the discussion with Senator Ron Johnson back in, I think it was June or May last year. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think there was you, Bree, there was Christy, Denise and Stefan Maddie. Yes, yeah, so there's Christy Dobbs and Candace Hayden. Cheryl Rutgers, um, yeah, Steph DeGary, Maddie DeGary. Yeah, and that, and I watched that, and as as you were all talking, um, tears were kind of streaming down my face because I realised that everything you were talking about, I was going through, and I wasn't going mental. Because <laughs> yeah. up until that point, I hadn't heard anyone actually verbalise it all, like say it all out loud so yeah it was that that actually kind of um confirmed what I was feeling really I suppose and um, but I had a little um just for a bit of fun I thought well we're not going to talk to Brie about her story because I wonder how many times people have talked to Brie about her story so I had a little google earlier and there are 30 google pages not articles 30 pages with your name in now I don't think that's a good thing 
<laughs> what, happens is, if you put, if, is, what happens if you put her name in DuckDuckGo? Because Google will be... Oh, I've never tried that one. Oh, I bet you've got yeah, maybe loads that's a new more challenge. there. I'm sure there's more important things to do. I really do. But I... <laughs> it's, it's weird because, like, personally, I'm not this kind of personality at all. But, you know, you guys know how this is. It's You see the truth. You know the truth is not out there. You see the people suffering and you can't not do something. And so, you know, um, but I think that the connections that we've been able to make, like you said, they're the most beautiful connections I ever could have imagined. It's like a family. And so when you meet other people that are going through the same thing, there's a lot of things that go unsaid because you both just know. You already know the experience. You're living the experience. You know the censorship. You understand the abuse that happens. And so you don't have to talk about that overtly. You don't have to explain it to the other person. You don't have to educate them. You can just be, you know? And so there's something amazing about that. And especially because if you're in this situation, you've been stripped of your dignity, your, you know, uh, a lot of people, their financial security and their health. And there's what's left, you know, a very vulnerable person usually. So you get a bunch of those vulnerable people together and they're going to talk very real conversations with each other, conversations that people by and large do not have with each other in the real world because they have their, you know, jockeying for social status or whatever, all those weird agendas people have. None of that exists with our communities that just people are who they are and they just want help, support, you know, and to share in their experiences together. It's an amazing thing. I've never seen a more diverse group of people click into place like I have with this injured community. Were you, both of you actually, were you the kind of people who um, were so open before and had such open, honest, um, brutally honest, real conversations with people before this? Were you like that, either of you? I was not. <laughs> I was puppies and rainbows. I hid, you know, all the dark, ugly things in life. And, you know, there was no, yeah, it's totally different now. Now it's like, well, this is reality. And so we're going to talk about reality because we have to save lives and that involves talking about what's real. How about you, Charlotte? Um, I'd say I was sort of in between. I've always, I've always, well, you know, at least for the last kind of 15 years, tried to have more of those open and honest conversations. And I think my job as a sports therapist meant that people, a bit like a hairdresser, people would talk to me in quite personal detail when they came to see me. So I was quite used to having those sort of conversations, but um, I think this has just added another level to it. <laughs> That's why you're so good at this though, because you're able to connect with people on that level already. Yeah, I've, um, I guess so. I've always done it. So I'm, I'm like the, Bree's here, Charlotte's here, I'm here. So I've always done it and um, the people, especially my mother actually hates it about me I think because I have to get right to the truth I need to get to the absolute honesty I, what my friend Jim always says um I would have a meaningful conversation with somebody at a bus stop and you know I get That's right awesome. to it yeah yeah no I, I get right to it I have to I, th I just I think I can't, I can't I don't know how to do superficial I need to connect really connect with people if they're going to be in my life and I need to connect with people even if I'm having a conversation in the street it's true I feel like I need that connection so um yeah for me this is it's a funny thing to be talking so publicly about um but uh, but that level Especially of connection is something that's so controversial yeah did you find it difficult then if you went from being somebody who wasn't so maybe openly connecting to people um, who you didn't know very well did was that quite difficult it was I mean I I didn't talk about my injury for seven months 
um, even my preschool kids and my preschool teacher or my preschool parents, I didn't tell them what was going on. I just told them that I was sick and I couldn't come back. So even with my very close friends and the people that relied on me for work, I didn't tell them. Like I just, I kept it very private. I was just like, I'm just really sick, but hopefully I'll be back next month or I'll be back the month after that. And so uh, when we launched our first website, um, Ken Rucker's, Cheryl Rucker's husband, um, he decided to do a podcast with me and, and Christy Dobbs and Denise Hertz. And that was like the first video that we did. And so he's like, and they had to talk me into it. They're like, you've got to do this with this. I'm like, okay, you know, be like five people that'll see it, right? So I did it. And then I figured I'd have a couple of weeks to prepare emotionally for like people actually seeing my face online or whatever. And they put it up the next day. So when they put it up, I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, oh my gosh, this is. And so, and then it went viral all over TikTok, all over YouTube, all over Facebook. And so, and it, from there, it just plowed forward. And then we ended up at a press conference and then another press conference and then podcasts and news stories. And so it really was very different and it was not what I was planning on doing. I didn't want to do it. It just kind of, but after that first thing went out, it was like, well, I guess, I guess we're out there. So we might as well, you know, fight the fight and advocate for people. Does, so, that, does that help with your healing being so connected to so many people now, or does it, was it quite challenging at first? Did it knock you back a little bit? Do you find it draining? So I'm curious what he meant. So <laughs> he, when I watch your podcasts, he will hear you guys and he'll be like, is that Caroline? Is that Charlotte? Oh. And he'll come over and he'll want to talk to you guys. I remember you guys. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so um, yeah, I want to know what you guys, what your take is on that too. Um, because at first I was, you know, obviously in the clinical trial, so I didn't know anybody. But um, so when I finally found some people, it was very healing, right? It was very really healing. It changed my entire outlook emotionally. I felt like I belonged. Um, I felt like, you know, maybe we were going to figure this out together because there's strength in numbers. You know, my whole perspective changed. Um, but as time has gone on, there's a lot of recounting the same dark, dreary stories and you know, all that stuff that emotionally isn't good to sit with that all the time. I think it's important to step away, compartmentalize it a little bit, you know, put some good energy into your body because you can't ruminate over your demise and everyone else's demise 24 seven. And that's been kind of an Achilles heel for me is balancing the advocacy with, you know, things that are not advocacy related, related or illness related. And so it's kind of been a double-edged sword at this point. I do think that the advocacy has um, impacted my own healing at this point. Um, so I do need to do a better job of taking care of myself, but you know, you guys know how it is. It's really hard to um, turn your back on other people who are suffering. Um, but at the same time, you know, we're only three people out of tens of thousands that we know of that are dealing with this, but so what do you guys think about that question? I'm curious how that's gone for you. Uh, Caroline and I actually had a conversation. Um, I can't remember when it was, but we had a conversation because it was kind of very obvious that we needed to kind of have really, really push with the advocacy and the support group and everything. And, and I remember Caroline phoning me up and saying, I, I just feel like this is something that I'm meant to do. Like I've got this strong feeling that it was something that we're supposed to be doing at this point in our lives. And do you remember that, Caroline? Mm, yeah, I do. And because I've had that feeling before, I've had that happen to me before, and it's it's a compulsion. It's, it's something you can't quite explain. Um, and I had it with the Tohoku, my volunteering work in Tohoku after the tsunami, and it was. Uh, it was just it was I'm not a religious person but if I was I those were these two examples when that happened it would be a perfect um, place to say 
god a god was driving me to do that it was it's an odd feeling yeah but like you you know it does you have to you have to be really careful that you don't just continually do this stuff that you take time out to be a mother or you know other things other roles and things that you do when you when you feel well enough because obviously our time is also squashed into this between flare-ups <laughs> it's limited isn't it <laughs> yeah we've got to make the most of those good moments too that's what's funny because it's like oh i'm feeling good today oh my gosh i have a million things to do let's do it all right now that never goes very well either but and i've had that conversation with you actually i've talked to both of you about this about <laughs> i have separately about protecting your own energy and protecting your own space and being you know setting boundaries on your own time and um Brie I remember having a conversation with you because your kids are young and I said look you can't try to get better just for the purpose of doing advocacy work and just for the purpose of helping other people you have to try to get better to make sure you spend time with your children and that was something at that time you hadn't you were work 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 in terms of the advocacy you know help 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 yeah. people and your family it needed a bit of attention that you remember us having that conversation so yeah i'm still not a very good student so <laughs> <laughs> i'm still working on it it's like every it's like the wisdom of caroline and then there's <laughs> there's the foils of brianne down here and me and me she's always telling me off <laughs> but it only comes from you know having made lots of mistakes in the past with you know throwing myself too much into things and not taking care of myself and being very strict from very early on when this happened to me i knew straight away i had to put myself first and matthew couldn't believe it when i said i'm taking three months off work i need to completely focus on healing he never known me say anything like that but it's important yeah this is definitely it's not a little I don't know it I don't I don't think people realize that it's not just a little bit of tingling and we're walking around just fine um it's it's definitely something that overtakes our bodies and it, we have to we definitely have to take it seriously and I don't do that all the time but so I think it's important to connect with people who are not going to be draining from the energy as well and um so i think that's why it's really important to have certain boundaries about ourselves we're not i mean we're not particularly getting better now are we we're kind of stuck at this management stage and i think i referred to my plan at the as a recovery plan it's not a recovery plan anymore it's a management plan it's a way of trying desperately to not break every single day and it requires effort so and it's um, hard to do that it's hard to change i mean because you know and just like all there's different phases to this right like the first phase everybody we're all just trying to hang on to what our lives were get do whatever we can to go back to how life was before and we hang on to that hang on to that hang on to that but then at some point we have to loosen that grip accept the reality that we're in grieve for the losses that we've had and then we can start there's really a lot of healing that happens after that grieving process but during that transition period it's really hard for the injured and you add the trauma on top of that you know and so the the problem with the advocacy work is we see those people when they're in that stage all the time and they need a little bit of help kind of moving through those steps and moving through that process when we're out of it but we still emotionally are tied back to those moments within ourselves and so it can be triggering which then can impact our own healing so with the groups now especially with everybody being chronic i call it the chronic phase um while they're in the chronic phase they need to step out of the groups they need to give themselves permission to move out of some of these communities where there is a lot of this panic and fear still circling um it just for their own to recalibrate recenter find their own peace and then connect with others that are kind of in their same place where you know they're focused on the healing and laughing about the situation i mean 
how many funny jokes do we have that nobody else understands, you know? So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so having a proper community, even if it's just a small handful of friends that are three, four, five that you know that you're not gonna get triggered every time you talk to these people, I think it's really important. And there's thousands, so there, you know, there are these smaller groups that are forming um, that allow people to do that. So we're going to um, our time always goes so quickly. We're nearly at half an hour. We um, haven't talked about pants. Bree desperately wanted to say something about pants. Oh, I've got a pants story for you, Bree. So um, on Monday, oh, I'm going to pick. Happy. I'm. <laughs> I, oh, I don't. I, I don't need an excuse to talk about pants. Um, and for 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 the Americans watching, we mean knickers when we say pants in England. We mean knickers. And um, so on Monday, I'm going to collect my altered Wonder Woman knickers. So <laughs> remember, I think the very first chat that we did, I talked about how I've lost. I don't know what's it's twenty. 20 over 20 kilos so more than three stone I don't know what you call that in pounds Brie um so I couldn't I was actually I can't fit in any of my knickers anymore but my Wonder Woman knickers were the ones that I really cared about because it's with my very special costume that I love and um and on Monday I'm going to pick up my new knickers that have been altered <laughs> I'm very happy That's awesome I love it I had to get all new pants pants myself. or knickers pants those are trousers, right? <laughs> oh, jeans. Pants is like the American catch-all. Right. Anything so not with underwear. two legs that you put on your body. Not underwear, though. No. Okay. Yeah, knickers is underwear, isn't it? Nick yeah, knickers is underwear. And trousers is pants. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I had to get all new, <laughs> all new bottoms. Did you lose lots of weight, too, then? I lost over 20 pounds and I still, I can't get it back. I just with the healthy diet. And so it's like gain weight or be electrocuted. Yeah, I'm, no. I'm, I'm the opposite. Cause I, I haven't actually altered my diet at all. And that's another thing that Caroline always tells me off about. So my thyroid <laughs> levels keep going up and down. So I lost 20 pounds and then I gained 30. So you're, one, <laughs> you're wandering around with no knickers. Well, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> so I when are you going to wear your Wonder Woman pants? When's the first time you're going to wear them? I'm going to wear them next Friday. No, next Saturday. So a week tomorrow, I'm going to wear them. I'm very excited. I shall be posting pictures everywhere. 